Today's spiritual enlightenment conversation is about the definition of a man. <clears throat> and the best way I can explain the definition of a man is the type of man I've been. And I've been many, many types of men. Many. Um, and the true man is when he faces his fears and he, uh, he defeats them. He don't run from them. Um, you know, and he accomplished that goal. A man is always setting goals. Higher, higher, bigger, bigger, more, more. He, 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 he's, he, he's, he's, that is what he's built on is defeating and, 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 and conquering things and, and just absorbing them. That's what's man is. It's, 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 it's monstrous, it's serious. It's the hunger and, and, and no rhyme or reason. Every man is going to be different. And, but every man has his goals and what he wants to conquer, and you can't stop that. So, you know, in the definition of a man, they, they always make man uh, that strong creature, that, that, that tough creature. And, and there's so much more to us than that. Every man is his own man. Um, and you got to see that man for, him, for who he is, for what it is. And, and, and it's, it's, a lot of it's immature. The rhyme and reason, no rhyme and reason. That's the immatureness of a man. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how, you know, God didn't make nothing bad. He didn't make nothing wrong. We're just not right for each other at that stage in our game. And that's a man and a woman. No rhyme and reason why the woman does to some of the things she did, she has done and, and and for what reason she's done. That's the man in her. That's the man in her. Her greatest strength is in her woo. But she has man in her. No man wants a woman, no woman wants a man. We're not right for each other. We truly don't want and desire one another. We we, we assume we want things. Okay, but it has nothing to do with the man. It has nothing to do with the woman. It has everything to do with themselves. And that's beyond that man and woman. And when you understand that and you become aware of that, that's when you become aware of yourself. You're a descending goddess that's on, on earth to walk out as a girl, woman, lady, only to return to heaven as a goddess descending. And you're born as a female. That's the fetus. That's the flesh. That is your sex. No different for a man. He's a descending angel. Born as a male. His sex. To walk out his stage as a boy. Man. His trials and tribulations. The cocoon stage. The stage that taking the elements of life, the hardships, no matter what he's did or done or going to do, it's not to be judged by nobody but one, two. That's Jesus and God. Not man, but his higher self. They know already. That is that is what was given to him by Jesus and God. And he needs to make that decision, what's right and wrong. That's our free will. But we, we bring others in it. We, we base what's going on at that point in time in our life. And that's the earthbound. Earthbound. Earthbound, they're very judgmental. Society is very judgmental. I rather put in Jesus' hands and God's hands and let them know question where I'm at in my life. And they know everything about me. That, that I don't believe in religion. Religion is man-made. It separates us. It separates us. And that's one thing that should bring us all together. I believe we're all talking to one God and one Jesus, period. I got to believe it's something higher and greater than what's on earth. Have to be. Have to be. You know, and, and what's common is not common between me and you. It's what's common is between me and, and Jesus and God. That's what, and I got to make sense of it. It's commonly going to be there all the time. And the more I think about my thoughts, 
the more I've been a man since I've been 14 years old. And everything I, I, I rated my manness to it was my physical size and strength. I was a country boy and a city boy. City boy, country boy, back to the city. And I knew the difference in me. I knew what I learned in the country. I knew what I learned in the city. And I knew how to mix it up where I, depending on where I was. Be aware of yourself. The things you go through are the things that Jesus and God knows about you. Do you know what they are about you? We, we blend in as man. We got one category for man. We got one category for woman. And we try to fit that category. A man is, he, he supposed to learn the three Ps. He protects both. He provides for the woman. And he parents the child. That's a man for him. But his, his, his problem is he's not aware of that. He becomes a very selfish and self-centered creature. That he's going to have to pay. Because his decision to become a gentleman that knows what I just said is to be true. That knows. The three Ps, simply remember them things. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's your seed or not. They're all God's kids. And our job is nothing but babysitter of God's children. And if we are blessed that our seed been used to create a child, we owe that thank you to Jesus and God. They see it so. They see it so. And any goddess that choose to carry your seed, you better treat her like a goddess. Just doing the earth as you do in the heaven. If you cannot bow, bow down for a goddess, you won't have the right to bow down for God. Jesus will not even let it so. He will not let it be so. Now, I believe every female is a goddess. And believe me, every female is a goddess. I cannot stand the woman. Is any woman that chooses to still be a woman with me, she tells me I cannot handle her man in her. I can't stand that. Understand her. I understand her. Cannot stand it. I say it because Jesus and God already knows that's what I'm thinking. But to really understand who you are, you got to defeat them things. You got to become what we are, angels. We protect. We provide. We parent. The three Ps. If we, if we get heaven on earth... It's between the legs of a goddess, a woman, a lady. We got to go through heaven. We didn't go as a man. We went as a gentleman because I was never standing for my God as a man. The ignorance I've been and things I've done and had to do, Jesus and God knows. Maybe nobody else, but Jesus and God knows. I admit to that. I don't regret it. I don't run from it. But I had to be. God didn't like the devil. God did not like the devil. I don't like the devil either. And God kicked the devil out of heaven. And I will kick the devil out of my heaven. If it makes me act negative, yes. You better believe it in any form or fashion. And I was I was stand in front of Jesus for it and explain why I did do it. For that moment in time, not for nobody else. Whatever that may mean. Whatever that may mean. The man I've been is every stage of my life I knew but I asked myself it got to be something greater than a man it has to be something greater than a man it can't just be this I can't walk around all day long acting strong and tough or acting strong and tough and he said it's, it's, it's written right there's something before yourself what's before man is a gentle man and that's everything opposite that the man is. All the things that we say we won't do, we got to accomplish them and do them. Everything that we claim we're not going to do, we got to do it to understand it. Then you understand what's greater. The greatness is not doing the things you say you won't do. The greatness is achieving the things that you know you won't do. You, Jesus, and God, when you accomplish that, then you know you're a gentleman. When we say we ain't, we do. When we say we won't, we will. You 
when you say you can't, you find a way and say, I can. And when you do that, you understand what's greater, the greatness in you. Okay, you got to put something before the man in you. And that's the gentleness in you. And that's the opposite. A woman is a creature too. She was born as a fee in the male. She became a girl, then she became a woman. We were born as a male, one. Become a boy and become a man, one. When she's a woman, she's two. The woo and the man. Okay, you've got to give her enough man there that she don't need you. She shouldn't even ask for you. She should never want you. She should desire what's the greatness in you. And that's not a man, that's a gentleman. That's what she should desire. And only a gentleman can desire the lady in her. But we get stuck in our man and our woman cocoon stage. We live in it. We die in it. We never admit to ourselves what's greater than a man. It's a gentleman. We never admit to ourselves what's greater than a woman. And it doesn't have no man in it. And that's a lady. We don't even understand our stages. And you're going to be many times, you're going to be a, a woman, but no woman wants to carry around a man when she wants one and desires one in her life. That's why she wants to be a lady. She don't want to be no male's woman. She want to be that male's lady. And she don't want no man. She wants a gentleman. We've been saying in our heads for so long, we want a lady in the street and a freak in the sheets. And God is okay with that. God is okay that he gave her eight to 15,000 nerve endings in her clitoris, size of a pinky. Why? To motivate her to have a chop of his. <laughs> Not ours. We just allowed to participate to give her that seed. And we hopefully we get her mental emotion to the heightened stage that she receives that seed. But we're not understanding. She's been given to the wrong part of us, a man. Okay, because we all, all the time, a man wants to fuck. The gentleman loves. He loves. He knows that's a mental and emotional, just as well, getting rewarded with the physical. You do not want to go through a heaven's gate as a man. You don't want to fuck up in heaven. You want to love in heaven. So don't try to go through they're fucking her. Go there and give the best part of you, loving her and loving yourself inside of her, loving that the fact that this God has given you opportunity to go through heaven's gate. Understand that. Understand what's greater than you is the goddess, than God's child. Be third in heaven and don't worry about being first on earth. What you do on the earth don't mean it's great in heaven. You gotta understand. A man, yeah, he may be first on earth, but he's third in heaven. And as long as you're aware of that, then you understand what you're gonna put before yourself. And that is ready, not a woman, but a lady goddess. Because you're a gentle angel. A gentleman on, on earth and an angel in heaven. You let go of the man in you. She's a lady earth and a goddess in heaven and a ch child of God that's what you put before yourself understand your direction understand what stage you are and if you know being a gentleman is greater than being a man doesn't matter when you learn it why would you ever want to be a man why would you ever want to be a man if you know God ain't going to accept it there's going to be moments in time that you would, that man will have to come out in you, but you want to live in your man's stage. A man is a monster. A gentleman is a beast. There's a difference between a monster and a beast. A monster is, is, is crazy. There's no rhyme or reason why it does what it does. But a beast is methodical, just as big as that monster, physically strength, but it uses something a little bit more, a mental and emotional capacity that that monster can't understand. Don't be that monster. Become that beast. Understand the analogies that's thrown at you and to ask yourself, who are you? What are you? Be aware of yourself. If you don't know who you are, what stage in your life, you'll never find yourself. You'll never find yourself. And, and it's beyond your earthbound titles. 
It's your celestial titles. If you whatever you're doing on earth, you know within your thoughts, it ain't right. <clears throat> you better believe Jesus and God is aware of that. And that's what you gotta address. That's what you gotta address. Because everybody on earth think it's right. It don't mean it's right in heaven. You gotta understand what right you wanna be. What right do you wanna be? You can be a millionaire or a billionaire. And everybody can praise and haze you, but does that mean it's gonna get you through heaven's gate when your thoughts knowing you've been doing wrong? Address that wrong. Address with who? You know, within yourself. Within your mental and your emotion. Your, your living soul is your emotions. Your living energy is your spirit. If you keep your energy and your emotions positive, you keep your soul and your spirit positive. Believe it. Your church, your religion is within you or your mental and your emotional wisdom that what you receive between you, Jesus, and God. And I don't think we got the right to speak to God. I believe Jesus was, believed, was left domain over heaven's gate. And he went because he gave his life for us. So I believe God gave him domain over heaven's gate. That means before we can go through talking to God, we got to go through Jesus. You can't bypass Jesus. You can't ignore your thoughts. We are soldiers of Jesus. I really truly believe that. Our trials and tribulations was designed by Jesus and given to us by God. When God takes the seed of a man and the egg of a woman, he asks Jesus, what do you need? And Jesus gave him that. God's soul, spirit, bonds us together. He placed inside the womb of a woman and they become the fetus that feeds off her flesh. Okay, the fear of a female, the fetus. It's inside a womb. God's going to visit that womb for over 10 months. I believe a female is closer to God than any male can ever be. I'm okay with that. Because anything that can bleed for seven days and carry a child for nine months and live through a birth, she's got to be the little distance of God. That's a goddess. I'm okay with that. I have no problem bowing down to a goddess, a female goddess. I understand a woman, can't stand her. That is her battle. And she wanna swallow with that man and make it, it's her man. <clears throat> no man is gonna handle my man to me. I, that's the type of man I've been, I've always been, I always will be. <laughs> but meeting that type of woman that wanted to swell up, I just back off, I ain't, that, I ain't that type of man, okay? I back off, I know her man is lunatic, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but I ain't about to fight it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm always going to be a G. I know what's greater than a man in me. It's the G in me. Knowing some 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 battles ain't worth fighting. Not to make you, not to, at the end of the day, to look bad in front of Jesus. Fuck, fuck with humanity. In, in front of Jesus and God. <laughs> and they going to look at me, you knew. I, yeah, but she was fine. It ain't worth it. She, her ass was off the hook. It ain't worth it. Jesus and God know they got some beautiful angel goddesses down there. They, they, they some beautiful goddess. That's the physical. Should be the least important. We ain't that mental, emotional capacity where we can actually bond and gel with each other. We're not. We can, we can complacent. We're bumping heads. That's the man and woman. Even if I might try to be a gentleman, try to exhort some of that. It's a force. You feel that force. The respectable thing is to back off on it. Back off on it. Don't force something when it ain't meant to be. And that's true strength. To walk away, regardless if you can force it or not. You can get it drunk. You can you can have a nice time. You can pretend to be what you want. You know you ain't going to be there next week. Remember that, that's using God's best friend. God is. If Jesus sees that, you think he's going to let you through heaven's gate? Them, them are the questions you got to ask within yourself. God, I don't think sex is bad. He gave a woman eight to 15,000 nerve in their clears. Size some of a pinky with a little hood on it. What's bad is what she uses it with and what she puts so much into it. 
she paid what she truly desired into a man's wants. And the man, that's that's too much weight for him. He already can feel the weight on it and he can run from it. Even before he gets it, he knows it. And that right there, that's bad. You gotta ask yourself, if you be honest with yourself, if you can't convert her and be that angel in her life, be that angel, her protector, that provider, and that parent to the child that she has or will have for you. If she has a child already before you, if you cannot parent that child, not father that child, parent that child, babysit that child, because it doesn't matter who the true father is, the true father is God himself. But earthbound, who cares? That is the role of that person that's playing that role in that child's life. Open yourself up and receive that child. I have six foster fathers. The man I've been, mm, I learned that from being a son to six different men, foster a relationship with six different men, five foster mothers. And I was that pit bull son. I was that pit bull son. I was that pride in each one of the fathers. I knew how to be that tough son, that strong son. Like I was in behavior class, I fought, you know, and I, I, I was, I, at the age of 14, I, I became a man. I was a man before I should have been. Never got to enjoy being a boy. And I thought it was cool. We all wanted to become a man soon. But being up a, a grown man, 40 years old, repeating it repetitively, you know, they kept me out of jail, I was a minor. They were grown men. They didn't want to go to court fighting a minor. It was some good times. It taught me a lot about myself. I understand what being a man is. It's not always good to be a man all day long. It's not, it's not who wants to carry around that, that strength. I want something where I can snuggle and cuddle. I didn't have that life. I didn't have that life. I, I learned it from my foster mothers watching my foster fathers bend to their knees and learning who had the power in the house. It was what's the goddess. We, we learn from one family, we don't see that it's repetitive over each and every family. That's what I learned from my foster life. Do you understand that? That's, that's the complexity of man. But no woman wants a man because he hasn't put it all together yet. The only one that's gonna put it all together is a gentleman. Do you understand what his arsenal been is everything he's been as a man and to pull a little bit from each one of his men to create the gentleman he needs to be for you, for himself. But it's something within you that that lady that he feels comfortable to allow himself to be that gentleman. Open that up. Don't be that woman with a gentleman. It's offensive. You don't have to tell him. A lady knows that he knows. She's sensitive about it. You're a whole womb. Your Fiji woo transcend into your lady. You sense that. You are a creation. Everything about you is creation. And when you learn that creation within you, your your whole womb, that it doesn't matter what you touch, you, him touching your skin, you create the ideal of him being the the greatest thing he can be on earth. And that is your protector. That is your provider. That is the parent to your child. When you understand that, you're, you're a creation. But it's something you don't need to fight, but you gotta learn how to sense it about yourself. Be in tune to yourself. You are, you are a goddess, God will come to you. You gonna have the closest relationship with God to any human on, on earth, especially when you're pregnant. You got the rib of God, not from man. You got a rib from God. Understand that rib from God and what it gives you the power, the ability to bleed for seven days, carry a child for nine months, and live through a birth. An angel will receive the blood of God. You bleed the blood of God. You are a goddess. Understand that. Really think about that. 
that give you a little bit more deeper meaning. We we teach you your period is black bad, but yet we go to church and drink some red wine and honor the blood of Christ. But yet we cannot appreciate the creature of Christ that bleed his blood. Does that make any sense? Mm, ask yourself. I'm just saying, think about it. Because when you take the time to think about your thoughts, you're having a conversation with Jesus and God. What comes out of that conversation is called wisdom. Nobody can give you more pure wisdom than God, Jesus and God. So that is you between you and them. And whatever that comes, the stuff I speak is the wisdom I receive from them. And when you truly believe in what you think, you don't read what you received, the wisdom that you receive, you speak it. Speak it out loud. That's your acceptance. You're accepting the word of Christ. Speak it and pick the best vocabulary you can with them. Speak to a person's emotions, their energy. You're speaking to their soul and their spirit. It's undeniable. They can't deny it. They hear it. And if they do the if they do deny it. Ignore it. They're not, they're not ignoring you. You're speaking the word of God. And they speaking, they're, they're ignoring the God. You ignore your thoughts. You ignore you ignore Jesus and God. That's not good. Now once you know it, you cannot think it. So stop ignoring your thoughts. And your job, your free will is to keep a what? Positive or negative. And when you see it, and you see the best way is positive. And you don't see no negative in it. It doesn't make you doubt. And you do it. And Jesus, and God knows you meant well. Guess what? They'll forgive you if it was a mistake. But be pure about it. Be true about it. Be real about it. And don't take another man's lie home. When you know it's a lie, mm, a lie is a sin. That's what a lie is. It's a sin. Don't take another person's lie and make it your sin. Call that lie if that's what your thoughts are. Because if that's what your thoughts are, who's giving you the answer? Jesus and God. Because you thought about it, you're thinking about it, you're having a conversation. And whatever comes out, speak it. Denounce it. That is your job. We're nothing but soldiers of Jesus. He knows everything he needs on earth. I believe God don't know, pay attention to what's going on. He got too much going on in heaven. There's a factory up there. Really. And the way we look at things, death should be a celebration. It's not for me to judge why this person died and how his death come became to him. If he was a good person or a bad person, that's not for me to judge. If I know him, it's for me to judge how he treated me. And I'm glad to met him. I hope he put a good word in for me up there. <laughs> That's it. Should be a celebration. I believe he's going to heaven. He or she put a good word in for me. I'm not judging. What I hope he I hope he lived out his trials and tribulations as God and Jesus seen it fit for it to be. And that's not for me to say. We all have our own trials and tribulations. Understand that. Don't judge not the other there is. Don't judge another of theirs. You're judging God and Jesus. Don't judge. Understand that. Be the best that you can be. And I'm not talking about the military. You're in the military for Jesus. You're soldiers of Jesus. You're a soldier goddess. You're a soldier angel. You're, you're here for a reason. Teach your children the things that you know. They need to know. They need to know. Make sure they know. And when you are pregnant with God's child, understand this. Never have a baby for a man. Never have a baby for yourself. Having a baby for a man, look, ask around. He'll disappoint you. <laughs> have a, never have a baby for yourself. Because what you think is today won't be tomorrow. And guess what? Have a baby for God. Because God can come to you for 10 months. He's going to go inside your womb. He's going to put them eyes in the right place, them, them toes, them count the finger. If he left it up to you, 
you forget a week. You be so upset with somebody, Tyrone or Billy, you'll forget that you should have grew an extra ear, uh, his second ear. You totally forgot. You got an earless child now. You don't remember the time and the period of time. God came inside you and you did labor for God. You did labor for God. And with that, when you feel that privilege that a man should provide for you, that is a God-given gift. Every male should provide for a lady, period. That's a God-given gift. You did labor for God. That's why a man feel, and we learned to turn it against you. Ain't nothing wrong with your CODs, cash on delivery, but you don't want that. You want that credit on the man. And the only one creature can get that out of out of a female is a lady creature. She knows. The man, a gentleman knows, don't come to me. Don't come to me unless you come to me correctly. You don't gotta speak it, but if you find that you have to speak it, that means you're a woman. And that creature's may make you live in your woman stage. That's why you're speaking it. If you cannot feel it and a person cannot emulate it and truly be true to it. That's not a gentleman. That's a man. You need to know that, but you gotta feel that within your womb. Within your womb. Not because you got a child by him. Even if you're not pregnant, haven't been pregnant, you have a womb. Learn to harness that energy inside your womb. Everything that goes inside you forms you. His energy, your energy. Anytime somebody's standing beside you, your synergy.